Hi, I'm Adam Lerhaupt, award-winning author and writing coach. And I just want to take a minute to thank you for coming to this webinar about how you can write picture books that sell. Uh, before we get into everything that I'm going to talk about, I want to take a minute to tell you how I got to where I am. Um, about 15 or 20 years ago, I was looking for a creative outlet uh, and I started writing. I thought I was going to write this great big American novel and what came out was a picture book. And after writing for, I guess, about a year or two years, I found that I um, kept going back to that style of writing. Um, picture books seemed to be what came out when I was being creative. And I spent a couple of years trying to figure out what you did. Like if you were writing a picture book, what do you do? How do you make it into a picture book? And um, it took me years to figure out what the process was for trying to figure out, first of all, how to write a good picture book. Second of all, what do you do with it when you think it's good? And third of all, um, really learning that when I thought it was good, it probably wasn't yet good. Uh, so that took me several years. And by that point, I started to take uh, writing courses, workshops, going to um, three-day events, uh, spending a week at a writing retreat, and really kind of absorbing and taking in as much information as I could. And over the next five or six years, I started to learn more about the business of writing and how you can really improve the type of writing that you're doing. So after spending that time doing that, uh, I'm now eight, nine years in, and I still haven't submitted anything. I don't know how to submit anything. I'm nervous about submitting something because when I read it, it's maybe not good enough. Maybe it is good enough. How do I even know that? So now I have to spend a couple of years figuring out that part of the process. So around 2009, 2010, I started submitting and um, one of my submissions, um, warning, do not open this book, uh, was accepted by Simon and & Schuster, and it came out in 2013. That year I wrote a follow-up, Please Open This Book, and that came out in 2015. Uh, over the next three years, I've sold 13 more manuscripts, um, many of which you can see up here, and some of which are still being illustrated. Um, my books have won numerous awards, they've been on best of lists, and um, Really, I spend my time every day writing, and it's wonderful. And in being able to do that, I started to think about how I could help other people who are going through what I went through, which is 10 or 15 years of trying to figure out exactly how to write a picture book that you can sell. Uh, I thought there had to be an easier way, and turns out that there is. There's kind of a process that you can put your ideas through that will help you generate a book every time. Um, it's, it's not officially guaranteed, but I've been using this process now for the past four or five years, and it works pretty well for me. Uh, I have a couple of people who have gone through it, and it's working for them. And I know it can work for you, too. It's really, really simple. And I'm going to take you through a couple of the uh, finer points of the process right now, completely for free to get you jump started. So let's jump right into that. I'm going to share my screen. Theoretically, this will work. And we will jump right into how you can write picture books that sell. So I think that's working. There we go. Um, so welcome to the Write Picture Books Itself free webinar, where I'm going to tell you about a couple of things that will jumpstart you in the process of writing picture books that people are going to want to buy. And that's not just consumers. We want to get agents to buy them, editors to buy them, and eventually then the consumers will gobble them up. So we're gonna talk a little bit about one of the more difficult concepts, which is what is showing versus telling. 
some quick and easy character generation tips, producing perfect plots, how to achieve submission success, and then some next steps. What can you do to put you on the right path? So first of all, we're gonna talk about show and tell. Uh, if you've ever taken a picture book writing course, you've heard people say, show, don't tell. And um, this is generally pretty good advice. So what exactly is it? Well, when you're showing something in a picture book, what you're doing is you're actively interacting with the, wor with the world of the book via dialogue or physicality. So you're really interacting, uh, showing motion and movement right? It's animated. It's energetic. And as I said, it's interacting with the word, with the world dynamically, right? You want it to be dynamic. You want it to be something big. Um, so that's showing. And I'll get to some examples in a minute. But before we do that, I want to explain what telling is, okay? The difference between showing and telling is Telling is narration. When you describe a scene without actually showing somebody doing anything in that scene, it is a description of the interaction instead of talking specifically about the interaction. It's would have instead of did. And it lacks the actual character in motion, in action, what is the character doing? So this is telling, and there are places where telling is important, right? If we're writing a chapter book, telling narration and description of interaction becomes very important to setting the scene. But in a picture book, it's a little bit extraneous. So let's look at a couple of quick examples. Oh, one other thing, telling is when you do a data dump, which is a uh, a lot of exposition. In a picture book, this is something that we don't really do. Again, if you're writing something longer form, that might be useful, but in a picture book, we wanna keep it lean and mean. So here's some examples, okay? When you're telling, you're going to describe the action instead of show the action, right? So if we're talking about Billy, and we're talking about him wanting to do something and then describing the problem that he's having, trying to do that, right? Or if we're talking about Jen wondering something but not actually taking charge of the situation, this is telling. So how could we rewrite those and show the action itself? Well, Billy could actually stumble, right? Maybe he has a twisted ankle, maybe he has uh, that problem already, right? And it makes him unable to do this. So instead of wanting to do something, he's actually stumbling. And Jen is actively picking up the phone and actively putting it down, right? And then she's wondering. So this is the difference between showing and telling. Hopefully you can see a little bit uh, of that illustrated point. Um, again, I have a lot more information on this in my actual course, but this should give you a good start, a good idea of how you can show the action in your writing. Now, a little bit about creating characters. The whole basis of your book is the character and the development of the character. So what are some easy ways that you can um, activate your characters and make them interesting? Well, remembering what we just talked about with showing and telling, your characters must be active. They have to be doing things. So you can't have a character sitting around. They need to actively be sitting around. Why are they sitting around? What's the problem, right? It's a good idea to avoid stereotypes, right? So if we're talking about the smart kid in class, we don't want it to be a typical smart person in class. We want it to be something different. We want it to somehow break a barrier or create some interest for the reader. And we want to consider character wants and needs. Okay? Anytime I start with a character, I start off talking about what my character wants or needs. So in my book, I will not eat you. 
My character of Theodore wants quiet. So then my job as the author is to take that quiet away from him and make it difficult for him to get. So if it's difficult for him to get the quiet, when he actually gets the quiet, we're going to have a beautiful moment. And then if I can give him something to need that is um, contrary to that quiet, it then gives the character another place to grow. So if he wants quiet, but what he really needs is a friend, then when he gets that quiet, he still doesn't have what he needs. He has what he wants, but not what he needs. So now he needs to go on that little bit of extra journey to grow and realize that what he needs might be at, in, in battle with what he wants. And when he gets that friend, we have a great resolution to the book. So when you're creating your character, give your character something to want, take it away, okay? And your want and your need could be the same thing, right? And allow your character to grow while you're developing that want and need. So that's very basically how I create characters. And I can use that as a whole story. You can see how uh, just using that wants and needs dynamic, I wrote, I will not eat you. And I wrote that story in my head, in the car while I was driving. And then I sat down and wrote, wrote it out. And it all started with giving my character the desire for quiet and taking it away. And that created a whole story. So there's another way that I write stories as well, and that's plot, okay? So when we're talking about plot, what is it exactly? Well, it is the storyline, the narrative of the book, but it's also the action within the story. So a plot is more than beginning, middle, and end, okay? It's the storyline, it's the action, it's the steps the main character takes as they try to figure out their goals in the story. So again, if we're talking about Theodore, Theodore wants quiet, I've taken it away. So what does Theodore do in order to get that quiet? And then once he has it and realizes it's not what he needs, how does he acquire what he needs? That's the plot. At its very simplest point, your plot is presenting your character with a problem and having them develop a solution. For Theodore, the problem is that he needs a friend, but he wants quiet. So the solution is to put a character in the story that refuses to go away. No matter what Theodore does, this character is going to force him to interact with them. And that's the solution in this, in I will not eat you. And that's the simplest type of plot. So if you wanna start writing a story based on plot, go with a problem and solution. Here's an example. The big bad wolf wants to eat the pigs, right? And he goes through this process. He's going to chow down on these pigs no matter what they do. House made of sticks, no problem, right? And that's the problem. How do the pigs solve the problem? Well, they build stronger and stronger houses, right? So problem and solution. And as we talked about with I Will Not Eat You, wants quiet, needs a friend. How do we get that solution, right? In my story, this is a good story. Uh, all the townsfolk are captured, right? Big problem, right? The bigger the problem, the better. Well, the solution is my main characters go and rescue them. Right? Pretty simple, straightforward problem and solution. And it's easy. Create a really big problem and then figure out how you're going to solve it. And there's your story. It's just that easy. Okay, we've got a character story. We've got a plot story. What is the next thing to do? Well, we have to submit. Okay. And there's two different places that you can submit. You can submit to an agent or you can submit to an editor, right? Both types of submission follow sort of a similar path. 
they're both very selective. So it's important to remember that agents and editors receive thousands of submissions. If you think of a pile of submissions, don't just double it, triple it, quadruple it. They get so many submissions. So how do you break through? What can you do to make a difference? Get your submission in front of them. Well, here's a couple of quick tips. You can find a referral, right? So if you've been to any kind of writing conference or retreat, sometimes you'll see an agent or editor there and they'll give you a window to submission. Or maybe you have a friend in the industry or someone who happens to know an agent or know an editor and they can make a connection for you. That's another great way to make that first connection, right? The first steps, right? And they can maybe even just give you some information about that agent or editor. But that's not where we stop. Now we have to do some research because it's important to understand what an agent or editor is looking for. For instance, if you write science fiction and the agent doesn't represent science fiction, they're not going to read your story. You want to find a good match, right? And editors are the same way. You don't want to send an editor a board book if they only take picture book submissions or a picture book if they only take chapter book submissions. Maybe they're not looking for a book about cowboys right now. Get an idea of what agents and editors are looking for and then send them that type of story and make sure that you stand out. There are all different ways to do this, but the best thing to do is only submit to someone looking for what you've written. I'm gonna say that again. Only submit to someone who is looking for the type of story that you've put together. That is so, so important. Again, comes down to that research. Okay, another way to stand out is to follow the guidelines for submission. Every agent or editor has specific guidelines for how you can submit to them. Usually these are posted online. If they're not, go to your library and find um, one of the many books on agents and editors for children's books and a lot of those books will have the guidelines for agent for current guidelines for agents and editors. The other thing you can do is you can send them a self-addressed stamped envelope requesting the guidelines. I know it's a little old school, but some places might still request that. Once you follow those guidelines, you'll notice that you'll have a much better chance of getting a response back. And the last thing that you can do is make sure your manuscript is as perfect as it can be. If you think that it's perfect, it might not be. Take it from me. I've thought that my manuscripts were great. And even after they've been purchased by a publisher, I have still made corrections. As a matter of fact, the original draft for warning, do not open this book. My monkeys don't actually stay in the book. So the manuscript that Simon and Schuster bought, you open the book, the monkeys all got out into a house. And the, the version that you see in the book has been revised several times from what I thought was a perfect story to the point where the monkeys never actually leave the book all the action takes place inside of the covers. And that's completely different. So trust me, when you think your manuscript is perfect, take a little bit of time and run it through some extra checks. So we've talked a little bit about characters. We've talked a little bit about plot and how you can submit to agents and editors now, what can you do next? How can you jumpstart yourself 
on the path to writing picture books that sell. Now, I'm going to take you back a minute to show you my path again. All right. So in the traditional method, the method that I followed, I was going to writing workshops and a two day writing workshop ran me about $800 with travel and hotel and whatever, uh, ever other miscellaneous expenses I was incurring. And I would go to one, maybe two of those a year. I was also attending big writing conferences. And these were a little bit more expensive in the neighborhood of $1,000 to $1,200, depending on which one you went to. And again, these are only local to me. So I wasn't traveling across the country to a big conference on the other side. I was just attending the writing conferences that were close to me to try to keep costs down. And I would also attend writing retreats. And these are much more expensive. So they were in the neighborhood of $1,500, which included my hotel and, and uh, food and those kinds of things. And this was one year for a grand total of around $3,300. Now, remember, I told you before that I spent anywhere from eight to 10 years doing this to try to figure out how I could write picture books that sell. Over the course of that eight to 10 years, I spent tens of thousands of dollars collecting knowledge and information on how to get where I am. And that's when I came up with this idea. The write picture books that sell idea. It's a much better way. And here's why. I put together 16 modules, all tightly packed with information, 45 individual lessons, all kinds of exercises. It's more than four hours of content that's presented in bite-sized increments. So each video is between five and 10 minutes long. So you can watch it at your leisure because I know that when I was uh, at the beginning of my career and I was trying to find time to write, I didn't always have an hour to sit down and put stuff together. I would have a few minutes here, a few minutes there. So I put together a course that, that distributes that information in bite-sized pieces that you can take in, all organized in these modules that will progress you from where do you get an idea all the way through submitting those ideas to agents and editors. But that's not it. I also included a bunch of different outlining tools. We could run a whole course just on how you can outline a picture book and get yourself started. I've included writing checklists and worksheets, which again could be its whole own course in preparing checklists, worksheets, uh, simple instructions that you can follow that say, follow, uh, if you go along this path, by the time you're done, you're gonna have a story that you'll be able to revise and, and submit. I put together character creation shortcuts and appropriate worksheets to go with that. Again, I've done whole weekend workshops where I spent $800 to go and put together, put together my character creation shortcuts where I, I spent $800 to put together these worksheets or to get the information that I'm presenting to you here. I've also put together plot generation shortcuts and worksheets, which again, could be a whole weekend course in itself. But with these worksheets, you can follow very simple steps to put together a plot that's going to practically write itself. You'll get revision checklists and a whole tip sheet that will allow, allow you to very quickly and easily prepare your manuscript for submission. And at the end of the course, you will get a free professional manuscript review where I or 
my agent or one of my editors will take a look at your manuscript and give you invaluable feedback. Add all that up and you've got a, a course that takes you from zero to 60 in a very short period of time. But that's not all. I'm also giving you agent querying tips and sample query letters for how I got an agent. Real letters that actually worked. And if that's not enough, I provide editor querying tips and samples of how I submitted manuscripts and got them accepted. So normally, all of this would cost $2,200, much less than you would spend in one year of the traditional method, but I'm not giving this for $2,200. My regular price for all of this is $497. But for the next 48 hours, I'm cutting that price almost in half and offering all of this for $297. That's right, only $297 for all of this information that will help you write picture books that sell. Thanks again for taking part in this webinar. I'm looking forward to helping each and every one of you get to where I am. And I hope someday to be able to have your books on my bookshelf. Thanks again. Happy writing.